since we since we already saluted the nation's flag and did roll call, we're going to skip that part. I'd like to announce that we had two executive sessions, one this morning on the ABB property and one this evening that was a personnel matter. Now it's citizens' comments. Comments will be taken at this time for any item to be voted on by the board that appears on the agenda. General township comments or questions will be addressed after the Board of Supervisors' discussion of old business. Please step to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. I think it's on the bottom. Hi, Chief Cass, Lawrence Fire and Rescue. You'd like to talk about the second item, I believe, uh, the retention of, or not the retention of, uh, the township current FCO. I would like, I gave everybody a copy of this letter. It's just a support letter from my end. No, I'm gonna stop you. If this is specific about a personnel item, it can, we're not discussing it in business. If you have a- I'm not asking you to discuss it. I'm, this is a support letter. I can say what he did for me. Not at our time. It's a personnel matter. If you- Gretchen, I can't do a support letter that he's done a good job for me. You've received the support letter and the board will consider it. And I want a public record? The board is actually modifying um, this motion, so it's going to take a different turn in any event. But we received the written letter and okay. because it was nothing about you guys. We understand. Yeah, it, it, yeah, okay. The personnel matters either and can way. I go to the second part of the letter then? Mm -hmm. We didn't. We have the letter. Yeah, but I, uh, part of the second part of the letter asks for uh, a, a def definition or a plan. If you do not carry him over who would be the acting FCO in that part because you just can't if you need we need a plan in place in case we don't have an FCO after tonight we understand and all I'm asking is for that to be given to us tonight or in the very near future we understand okay thank you then I'll leave it on that right <laughs> Yeah, please step to the microphone and state your name and address for the record. Thank you. My name is Carolyn Yeagle. I'm with Environmental Planning and Design. I am here to give a public comment as it relates to uh, two resolutions that are on the agenda, number 27-2020 and number 28-2020. Um, in terms of information that had been presented as part of past public hearings. I'd also like to uh, enter some additional information as part of the public comment period so that- um, At this point, to... you're free to comment, but the record is closed. I understand. So please that. understand that that will not, what you say this evening will not be taken into consideration for this, for that specific, for those specific agenda items because that hearing has already been closed. I, I do recognize that the hearing has been closed. I've spoken with the township staff uh, as it relates to being able to speak as part of the public comment period here this evening. Uh, Liz and I have identified that I would have just an opportunity to go over these points. I know my time is limited, so I would just like to um, speak to a few points. You're free to speak, but again, just so you understand the record on that hearing is closed. Yes, ma'am. Uh, from a standpoint of the information about the parcels and their current uses, as well as how they're presented uh, and relate to the existing comprehensive plan, the existing zoning ordinance, as well as your evolution of the proposed comprehensive plan draft, um, there are a, a couple of important points. One being that there are two residents and two businesses uh, on the properties as they exist. There are a number of consistencies that can be resolved with the proposed uh, rezoning because as they exist today, a number of things are uh, non-conforming and so the proposed uh, rezoning would resolve those non-conformities. Uh, <coughs> secondly, 
Uh, there is a set of mixed-use patterns, which within your existing comprehensive plan, the pattern that you have framed out for mixed-use in the future, uh, these uh, areas would be bridges between what you've identified on both sides of one par property as well as on another uh, side, the, the main road there and the three properties so that there would be uh, the ability to have mixed use because that is what is slated in the future. And then uh, thirdly, that uh, as there were a number of comments that were driven um, uh, on things rather than the facts, um, as part of some of the public hearing, we identify that the analysis that was completed as part of the application was done looking, again, at the uh, patterns and facts within your existing comprehensive plan, the existing zoning, and all the evolution of what has happened uh, through the drafting of your comprehensive plan. Uh, there has been additional information that we uh, had for your consideration as part of a September discussion and the mixed use uh, proposals, and we would like um, for that to also just be identified as uh, points that have been uh, as part of this process. The evolution of this to an additional uh, consideration for mixed use is one again that would resolve. Uh, with all due respect, the I'm going to ask you just to wrap it up. We, like I said, we've already considered, we already sat through the hearing, and just out of fairness for the public and the residents who didn't know that you were going to be here to speak, we advised them at the point in time that that hearing was closed. So I'll ask, I'll give you another minute or so to kind of wrap up and summarize what what it is that you're trying to say. But at this point. That he, like I said before, that hearing has already been closed. I, I actually, and also, we are nowhere near adopting a comprehensive plan. So you're saying down the road these uses, I, I don't think a lot of them are going to be. We had inquired as to the question. I actually was finished with my last statement as to the uh, rationale in terms of these consistencies that would be able to be uh, resolved with that. So I, I had nothing further, ma'am, as you I appreciate the, the time. And uh, secondly, in our inquiries about the status of the comprehensive plan, we had not um, had anyone uh, to tell us about that specifically in its time frame. So I appreciate uh, the information because as we understood, what was proposed was what was uh, potentially being considered and oh. the consideration for the mixed use uh, that we requested in September. Thanks. Thank you. Um, just out of fairness to the residents, if there is anyone in attendance that would like a few minutes to speak relative to that hearing, now would be the time I'd ask you to step to the microphone. Again, keep in mind that that hearing was held in September and has been, or I mean, it's whole, November, and was has been closed. So it won't be really considered, but I do want to give you the opportunity to speak. Okay. Kevin, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, Kevin Camerson, 15 Swahart Road. I had a question about two of them. Um, 25-2020, consider applying for DCNR grant for a Montour Trail connection near Klinger Park. Wasn't there a connection already there? Mm -hmm. It was never done? It was never completed. I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, probably three or four years ago, uh, when Supervisor Schrader was on the board with me, we worked through some grants, never were successful um, getting uh, those LSA grants for this. We have some new information that will be presented in order to finish that project. So the access to the new property that got built didn't take any trail away or nothing like that? Have we talked to that guy, I mean, yeah. about helping to pay for this? Yeah. I can give my whole presentation now if you want me to. No, that's fine. I think to answer Kevin's question, when they built the field house, they built a part of it, but they're still a gap on the property. Gap on the township property, and then there's a gap to get it uh, from um, Clinger Road and bring it over to okay. South Point Boulevard. Okay. Thanks. So the reserve put their piece in, and the, uh, the developer of the field house did build, there's still two pieces that are missing. Correct. And also, um, uh, Chairman, since you said you could make some comments on those two resolutions, but on 28-2020, you know, I got to say that um, for years, you know, I used to own property next to this parcel, and um, I got to say, you know, these properties have been non-conforming for a long time, and um, 
you know, the Delbo family um, has been, you know, was great there. I mean, um, they ran some great businesses. So, so I want to say thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Kara Sheridan, 58 North of Poly Road. I just had sort of a question and then um, kind of just a comment. So uh, regarding those two resolutions, I was just curious because I didn't, wasn't aware that the public hearing was going on. So I'm just wondering, was there any kind of information shared on the proposed use if the rezoning was to occur? Like what, it, what would be going there or what, what would be happening on that? At the, at? at the hearing, they said that they had no specific plan they were asking for a general rezoning, but there was no intended use at this point. Is, that's what is we were it generally told. on rezoning. Is that something that's shared or not? It's not like required. Or There's no that? requirement on a rezoning because, say, for example, you rezone a property to C1 for Mr. Gizio who wants to do a commercial use there, and then somebody else comes in. That rezoning doesn't re revert back to what it was. It stays C1. And whoever utilizes that property after has the, the ability to use that property for C1. So when you're considering a rezoning of a property, you really don't want to do it for a specific reason. Okay. You want to look more generally at does it fit the area. Okay, great. Makes sense. Um, my only other comment is, um, is there any reason why we can't put an advertisement of when the public hearings are going to occur on the website? Because... That's kind of, I mean, the only way, as far as I'm aware, that you can find out if there's a public hearing is if you get, you subscribe to the Observer Reporter and you read it in the Observer Reporter. I think that's a great idea. Jack, are you okay? okay. Just okay, as an yeah. awareness. I mean, if there's something that's sure. that, that affects people, it would be good for them cause, to hear, you know, whatever's being shared about that. So that's it. Yeah, Thanks. that's a great idea. We're a Facebook page. Okay. Hello, uh, my name is Edward Badia, 22 Birchway Muse. Um, I wanted to address um, the AML grant that's listed under new business. Is that something I could do now, or would you prefer me to wait till later? You can do it now if you do want. Do it right now? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get into what happened with the first grant, e even though I was kind of dismayed uh, uh, some of the uh, things that took place there. But tonight, I guess uh, we are aware that we're going to be facing a new uh, uh, possibility to get a new grant, and uh, I've been a resident of uh, Muse for 38 years. Never really realized what kind of a toxic dump uh, was up on the hill behind the present uh, brand new elementary school, and I feel that um, it's a detriment to my health, to the residents of Muse, to the uh, elementary students there, and it needs to be cleaned up. Um, do, does anybody uh, have any educated input as to why we're, we are not going to take free money to clean this uh, toxic waste dump up? Any, any of you uh, supervisors? Well, just so a point, for a point of clarification, this, is, this specific grant is for more than just the cleanup. So you could not utilize this grant to clean it up and leave it as green space. There is a requirement as part of this grant that there's an, ac an economic redevelopment of the property. So right. that means it would have to be utilized for some, some purpose, office buildings, public works garage, something like that. So if there is a, if the plan, which we've heard from some residents is clean it up and leave it green space, utilizing this grant would not allow us to do so. Okay, so I mean, what is the uh, reasoning behind not cleaning it up and, and utilizing for, for some sort of uh, uh, new building. What, what would be your argument against that? I mean, I can't, yeah, I can't really speak. I mean, I what's that? I didn't hear what you said you wanted to read. I said, what, I understand the first grant, we could have cleaned it up, didn't have necessarily have to build anything on it. That's gone by the wayside. What is the reasoning behind this second grant by not taking advantage of that and actually putting a new, uh, new structures on the, uh, on the property. So the first grant, first of all, we were never formally awarded it. Uh, well, the, can, I, can I? We can agree to disagree on that. I know what you're going to say. I'm telling you from my position, we were never formally awarded that grant. Okay. Second of all, that grant was for four point, approximately four point, I don't remember the numbers off the top of my head, but approximately four point, the application or the plan under that grant was actually for $4.5 million. The first grant? Yes. I thought it was 
No, yeah. That's what they awarded. So that's what that that's what not what they didn't award. That's they, what so that's what we are asking for. But there's the economic well, re. Development no, portion of the grant. Asking. So there was the grant that we were asking for, which was 1.88, mm -hmm. but the economic redevelopment portion was 2.6. And I can pull it up if you give me a second. The exact, it's like 2,666,000 and some change. Hold on, I'll pull it up. But that what portion of that money was required to come from township taxpayer funds. So the you know, what's been out in the public saying, oh, we threw away free money, we, we gave up. First of all, we were never formally awarded it. Second of all, the 1.88 or 1.9 that we were asking for required a significant contribution from the township that I wasn't comfortable with, and I can only speak for myself, but other board members. I thought that contribution was a total of like 450000 Was that not true? I can give me two seconds and I'll pull I thought it. We, we spent 258000 and It's a matching we, fund, Ed. No. Yeah, I understand it, but did we not spend yes, 258000 uh, with with testing? You're mixing up ideas. So the, the, um, the $450,000 that you're talking about was the part of the ABB sales agreement that required that we spend $450,000 towards the act to clean up of that property. That 1.88 that we were asking the grant for would go towards the cleanup of the coal refuge pile, and that it was like 1.1 for the cleanup of the coal refuge pile, and $700,000 towards a road, an access road that would run through. There was still, on top of that $450,000 that we were required to pay, now a portion of that $450,000 would come off of that one Point nine grant that we applied for, but we were still required per the grant, per the grant application that we submitted to spend two million six hundred and sixty six thousand. Not true at all. We're it's that. it says right here. Hold on. Yes, it says it here. Items two and three. So the waste file cleanup was one million one hundred eighty three thousand eight hundred and and ten thousand dollars funded by this grant that we applied for there was an access road of seven hundred one thousand five hundred seven hundred one five hundred seven hundred one thousand five hundred dollars funded by the grant there was also a portion of the grant application that was for the public works building that was for the economic redevelopment of the property dan step in at any point if i'm yeah. wrong no you're right um for the economic that was funded by the township that amount was two million six hundred six Sixty-six thousand six hundred and twenty-five dollars. Some building, we need a new public works building. That's what took us to the top of the list. If we didn't build it there, we're going to build it somewhere. We're going to, we're going to find the space, and we got. That's what I'm to, saying, well, though. Not, was, it wasn't contingent on that grant. I mean, we, yes, we it was. That grant, the refund of that grant, us getting that grant money was absolutely one hundred percent contingent well, really, upon plan, us doing us yeah. doing economic redevelopment. We're going to spend two point four million somewhere on our new public works building. If it's not there, it's going to be somewhere. But if it's not, but if it's not there, then we don't get reimbursed for that 1.9, right? Dan, am I wrong? That, that, that is correct. Yeah, the the, uh, the grant was a pilot AML grant, and the uh, the economic development that they were considering to move the coal waste pile up to be cleaned up more quickly was the fact that there would be economic development. And the economic development that was proposed at that time was the construction of a new public works building. And they accepted that and the jobs that it would bring, the building construction would be sort of the total investment that if the, if the state was putting money in to clean up the coal dump, that there was gonna be an investment for some benefit sure. to economic development. Right. And right. that- Yeah, and would the 2.4 million be spent somewhere else if we bought something somewhere else? You, if you're gonna build a new township building, sure, you're gonna spend the money to build it yeah. somewhere. But that specific grant, the reason that a major, I can only speak for myself, step in at any point if you don't agree. The reason that I didn't wanna move forward with it was I didn't wanna strap the township with $2,666,000 commitment to that because if we didn't move forward with that public works building for whatever reason, that grant is a reimbursable grant. That would mean we would not be refunded the $1.9 million if they had ch chosen to give it to us. I have never said that I was opposed to the cleanup of that property. In fact, I would like to see it as green space. Right. Having said that, this specific grant application that was submitted, I wasn't in agreement with. I didn't want to strap the township with two, 
a $2.6 million requirement because it was a requirement for this reimbursable grant in order to get that 1.9. Now, having said that, are there things down the road that we could do? Maybe. I don't know. We're still looking into it. That's why we had an executive session this morning. You said you're not committed to doing new, new public works building. I am not that. on that location, and you know that. that. You know but, that. So let me ask you, how does that first grant differ from this new uh, possibility uh, to get the grant? The the economic redevelopment portion of that would have had to have been different. I, I, I am chairperson, but that was asked to be put on by Supervisor Cassiola, and I've said from the beginning of being appointed chairperson, if a board member requests something to be on the agenda, as long as they're willing to defend it, I'm not going to deny it, as long as we're not beating a dead horse month after month. But Supervisor Cassiola approached me and the township manager and asked for that to be on there. You can ask our township manager. I said, fine with me, as long as he's willing to defend it. Okay, I, I, because I read the... Uh... I'm happy to show... I have the grant application right here. That's where I'm getting the numbers from. I'm not pulling them out of thin air. Okay. So I'm happy after the meeting, if you want to hang for a few minutes, I'll sit down and show you this and show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, are you guys going to actually vote tonight on if yeah. you're going to apply for that grant? So this is a item under discussion of new business, so it's not a specific agenda item. So there will be a discussion amongst our board members, but there will be no formal vote. And form, okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? The Cecil Township Historical Society will meet on Wednesday, January 15th, 2020 at 7 p.m. in the meeting room of the municipal building at 355 Miller's Run Road. Resolutions. 21-2020, consider order, ordinance number 120 imposing weight restrictions to the Hahn Road Bridge located 900 feet southeast of the intersection of Georgetown Road. Right, so this is just a formality. The board uh, previously it, at the December meeting um, moved to actually uh, do this weight restriction. The township engineer has already done the study. This is the formal ordinance so that um, everything is copacetic. You'll have the ordinance. Uh, this will be posted and callers will be notified and then it will take effect. I'll make a motion to approve. Do, do I have a second? I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes five zero. I need shoot. Twenty twenty or twenty two twenty. Discuss discuss the position of fire code official. I make a motion to suspend Jason Brown without pay pending a hearing. I'm second that. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Eric, did you say? Okay. Passes five zero. All right. A supplemental motion is to appoint Gretchen Moore as hearing officer to hold a hearing to consider, uh, I'm sorry, to hold a hearing with Jason Brown to consider his employment per his request. The hearing officer will report back to the board with a summary and recommendations. That's my motion. I'll second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5-0. Twenty three twenty twenty. Consider application for payment number two and final for the work completed to date for the contract B twenty nineteen pavement maintenance program, milling and paving non liquid fuels in the amount of sixty seven thousand six hundred seventy six dollars and twenty eight cents to Young Blood Paving as recommended by the township engineer. Yeah, this is the final payment payment for the uh, 2019 road program. Uh, all of the punch list items have been addressed. The maintenance bond has been provided. Uh, so it's our recommendation to make final payment to Youngblood. I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5-0. 24 2020 consider application 2019 0027 for the traditions of america phase two subdivision plan location han road r2 medium density residential zoning district district applicant traditions of america the plan received planning commission approval on december 19 2019 contingent upon addressing comments from the township engineer uh, Grant Charing with PBE, here representing Traditions of America. Uh, yes, we did receive a recommendation for uh, final approval one in phase two. Uh, we have received Gateway's letter 
um, and we have actually updated the plans. We just need to submit them to the township uh, and to Gateway that have addressed all the comments in the recent letter. So we will take care of that. As a quick update, um, I believe that everybody is very familiar with the site at this point in time, um, but um, the site's located on Han Road. The blue uh, is the area that we are currently developing. The red area was something that we had subdivided off previously to be um, uh, to stay with the current pro the property owner, the previous property owner. Uh, this is the overall master plan. We are currently working in phase one, which is the blue area. Uh, there were 67 units there. That is where the clubhouse is. Uh, the contractor is currently doing the realignment uh, of Han Road, uh, so they are working through that. Uh, the area that we're looking for um, specifically tonight for approval is phase two, which is the area in the green, and that's 65 units. This is just a blow up of phase, phase two. Um, it would come up the hillside from the uh, proposed clubhouse. Uh, we would come uh, upslope. Uh, there would be a connection through, and then also the second point of access uh, down to Hunt Road would be included in this phase. So with that, if I can answer any questions that you have. I'll comment at this point if the board would like. Uh, we have reviewed the plans, and uh, there are a couple of very minor comments that Grant said that they still need to address on the plans. In addition to that, uh, they need to do the normal uh, things, uh, such as uh, submit their plans to the municipal authority. They, ha they have submitted those. Uh, they have to provide a cost estimate. They will need a developer's agreement. And uh, my recommendation would be, uh, if you would consider this, if you want to consider this tonight, to just make it contingent upon my January 6, 2020 letter, uh, which includes all of those items. I, I want to go back to what we mentioned before. Where have you provided any overflow parking? For the clubhouse or for, for the house? Just in general? There is. Um, I, there was actually within uh, the preliminary plan, there was approvals uh, for the setbacks, and there was um, graphics that were shown that there are two car spaces in the driveway, plus two within the, the garage. And, and you could fit those, Ron, before you got to the sidewalk. Correct. So on the side with the sidewalks, we have a 15-foot setback. On I still don't out. agree with that. I know I brought that up before about overflow parking and some place to plow the snow. These are all items that I believe were addressed during preliminary plan stage. I don't see where they were addressed. They, the parking was addressed through the modifications uh, and the setbacks and the agreement to 15 feet on the side with sidewalks. Um, as far as the as snow removal, um, I, am not, I was not privy to those conversations, so I don't know how that was addressed. Dan, anywhere, uh, anywhere within anywhere within cul-de-sacs, I know that it's a requirement that you guys will um, require an easement uh, where snow could be st uh, stockpiled. Now, uh, there are no cul-de-sacs within this proposed plan other than a temporary cul-de-sac within phase seven that would connect to uh, future property. Dan, I'd like to direct this to you. I believe we got an email this afternoon from Shannon about the uh, sewage here and this phase two. It's not been approved by Cecil Township Municipal Authority. And, and that's, that, that's standard. That would be a condition of your approval tonight that they wouldn't go any further. That's typical, Frank. And, and I just would comment to the board, with all due respect to Ron, I, I don't I'm not disagree with your comments, but we did go through a, a, a very long PRD process on this, and they have submitted the plan tonight in accordance with the approved PRD. That's the first thing that I look at. Um, and... and um, if if you th those comments that you're bringing up now would have been germane to the PRD, which I think you brought them up, but the board still voted to approve the plan as it was submitted with the conditions. And uh, we put conditions on it like five foot sidewalks, uh, the road improvements uh, that they're doing all the way up to um, Maple Lane. Uh, there are a number of different improvement uh, things that the board has has put upon this through the PRD, uh, but but I'm not aware of anything related to the parking. This layout is the one that was approved by the board. So. If I could just ask one quick question as far as sewage planning. Go ahead. The planning module was approved, and just today I actually received an email from 
uh, the Cecil Township Municipal Authority that they have approved our final plans. I'll make sure to forward that email uh, to Liz and to, to Dan. Of course, we are actually we're having also tomorrow a uh, pre-construction meeting with uh, Walter Oshinsky and the consulting engineer KLH. I had a question that uh, letter you stated Dan was today, January yeah, six. So did that? Did those uh, comments go to the planning commission? before they came here or they and approved it, the, it? The planning commission recommended to approve it conditioned upon them addressing the comments in my letter. My letter was three pages long. Uh, we cut it down to just a few comments. There's like uh, three or four technical comments. They're just really labeling on plans and the rest of them are third party type comments. The, uh, the municipal authority and then the developer's agreement is standard. We don't do that until after the board approves the plan. And the same with providing the cost estimates. So, um, so if you use today, January sixth, that letter did not go to the planning commission, correct? Or the same? You're just readdressing points that the uh, planning commission. Planning approved? commission approved it with these items being addressed. They addressed the majority of them. These are the remaining ones. If that makes any sense. Okay. Remember, being on the planning commission, though, we would have things that were approved based on those things being completed. Well, yeah. since well, January 6th, so they weren't actually technically completed. Yeah. I, again, I'm not, I'm not taking trap metal for, for uh, Grant here. His, <laughs> his requirement is to finish the plans before we get them to the meeting. And if the board doesn't want to approve it tonight, you have enough time to wait a month. If you'd like to wait a month, um, you know, I, we, we, did, we got the plans in on Thursday. We did our best to review them before your meeting tonight. And this is where we stand. There's a couple remaining items which he says that he's addressed. And uh, I'm comfortable I, with, uh, with the consultant. I've, I, I mean, they're working on almost every plan in the, in the development. And if he says he's going to do something, he does it. Yeah, the, um, I actually spoke uh, with Gateway. We worked through multiple of these comments and made sure that we were, they were addressed. I just need to print the plan sets and get them back in. In my opinion, they are all very minor, or as Dan's pointing out, third-party items that happen after um, final, final approval is actually issued. So... I have no concern with addressing all those comments and being in compliance with the letter provided. Dan, and you, con you concur with Grant that these are very minor items that yes. can easily be addressed. But, but again, I can't, this is the board's decision. If you want to wait a month, I'm yeah, you can wait a opinion. month. I'm not, I'm not saying you have to approve it. I'm yeah, what, my comment is that, according to what Ron said, uh, I know he said we would address that. I know he brought up the parking, and I can't remember any plan we've ever approved that didn't since Georgetown Estates went in, in in the 80s that we didn't require uh, off-street parking. And I know, I thought they said they would address it. Were, were we remiss in approving a preliminary plan if it didn't have it? They come for the, the final plan. A preliminary is preliminary for us and them. And I, I, I mean, if we were remiss in not seeing that, that they didn't address that, as, as Ron brought it up, um, I, I don't know why we can't address it as a yeah, final step. I mean, I mean McConnell's trail says remember, three. Remember, remember these, are, these are not townhouses. These are single-family homes. Each one of them has double car garages, and there's room in the driveway to park two more cars before you get to the sidewalk. When I recall from the PRD approval, that was sufficient to satisfy the board. Plus, Grant, talk about your clubhouse. Don't you have parking? You have a Did it? There, there is parking within the clubhouse, but... And, and that, that is well, I brought that up specifically and asked you if there were, you thought there were enough for your events at a at a clubhouse, and you you felt I mean you're the expert at that you felt that was good, but that didn't uh, didn't account for people who have company that, that are going to start parking in your clubhouse parking lot just for their own company. The the conversation about the clubhouse was specific to events within the clubhouse. Right. What sure. we're talking about now is is guest parking spaces. No, which, no, that's what I brought up before was overflow parking. For guests. Now, I know up in McConnell's Trails, they got three overflow lots up there. We do, and there are, there are townhomes within that development. Not on the other side of the trail. And there's I two guess. lots up on the other side yes. of the trail. Yes, sir, there are. Would there be not No, I know that. They're just building single families. What? Would there be anything to prevent these are single family homes? Like when I have guests over, people that no longer fit in my driveway park along the fronts of our homes. Why the, the, temporarily? Why couldn't you do this in this situation? To my knowledge, the whole discussion with the setbacks related to this exact issue, with making sure that there was adequate space for guest parking within driveways that would not conflict with the sidewalks. Didn't in fact? Didn't you bring 
a picture with a model of a car. This, this was this was slides from Victor Wetzel Associates, who had run this through the preliminary plan and received the modifications for the setbacks. Um, specifically, I believe that they were discussing guest parking. But, but you're talking two different things completely. You're talking about keeping the cars from blocking the sidewalk, and I'm talking about overflow parking. They're completely different. I believe that the guest parking spaces were addressed with the driveway spaces because I, there I don't are believe also true. two car garage. That was only to, so they didn't block the sidewalk. That was the argument when we had the first meeting. The cars would be blocking the sidewalks. So you didn't adjust that to, to compensate for not parking on the street. You did that so you could get the cars in the driveway and not block the sidewalk. All that I could say at this point with that conversation is that we have preliminary PRD and a final PRD approved. We also have an overall preliminary plan approved. There have been multiple opportunities to where if we were going to be required to provide guest parking, we could have done that. We are very deep within this process at this point, especially when we've already received final approval for phase one, where we start to have this conversation now at phase two. So I, I understand the point. Um, a lot of the issues from my knowledge of what's happened within the township has come from, as Dan said, with townhomes. Um, in this instance, it's single family. So I'm just gonna ask that tonight, if there could be a recommendation made based on a conditional approval letter, we proceed in that manner. Um, at this point in time, going back and revisiting and looking at the street design, grading, utilities to provide parking spaces, we're looking at redesigns. So at this point, if you're done, I'm gonna ask if there's a motion to Consider the application. I, I move to table the application. For a I would second it. Month. There's a motion on the floor to and a second to table. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, thank you. 25 2020, consider applying for a DCNR grant for the Montour Trail connection near Klinger Park. Um, this is similar, if you remember, I forget in the summer at some point, we had to. Um, take a board vote to approve the LSA grant for bridges. It's a formality. It's a requirement as part of the grant. Um, if for those of you that aren't familiar, probably three years ago, 2016, 2015 or so, um, a former supervisor and I had worked towards a DCNR grant um, for a Montour Trail connector that would connect the Montour Trail up into South Point. Um, it's actually a three-phase project that would include the connector, some sidewalks, parking, um, a soccer field, a playground, a concession stand, a dog park. It's a whole big plan. Um, I was actually the wash. I actually had a meeting um, a couple weeks ago with the Washington County Chamber of Commerce specific to this grant. They would like to. Um, bring it back up and they would like to throw their weight behind it. So they are willing to give us towards the project right off the top $50,000. We also had a conversation with Crown Castle. They have also committed to $50,000. We've gotten a $20,000 commitment from Washington County Redevelopment Authority. We are just starting this process. The grant application opens January 15th and goes until mid-April. I think it's April 22nd or so. Um, we are on track actually at this point to have the phase one of the grant fully funded before we even submit the DCNR grant, which we would open to the, to the whole thing, to all three phases if that's the case. Uh, we plan to reach out to other businesses in South Point as this directly impacts them. Their um, employees can utilize the trail for exercise during work hours. It, it, it's really a great thing. And for those of you that utilize the trail, which I do here uh, on this side of the town, it's wonderful, and please understand there are zero taxpayer funds that would go into this. Um, we would not use any taxpayer funding, even though it's township-owned property, there would be no taxpayer, we are funding this 100% through donations and grants. Um, so that's what this DCNR grant is for the Montour Trail Connector near Klinger Park. Anybody have any questions? Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 26 2020, consider pavement markings for our hair road. Supervisor Gizio, yes. you want to? Yes, I've been getting um, a lot of complaints from uh, residents who live up in Mayfair Meadows and travel O'Hara Road every day. 
and also some residents from Cannonsburg um, complaining um, that we need lines on the road. Um, in my experiences over the years, paving roads for 40 years uh, throughout many municipalities and boroughs, I see a, a four inch single yellow line on these roads. But um, I'd like to read a short article from our Pennsylvania Township News Magazine. Uh, it addresses this and it says, may we use a single solid yellow center line on a narrow public road. According to Federal Highway Administration, a single solid yellow center line on roads open to traffic, including rural, residential, or narrow roads is not allowed. A single line introduces ambiguity to the motorist, does not adequately communicate whether passing is allowed or prohibited in one or both directions. Using a single yellow center line would only save six to eight inches in width compared to a double line. And even on narrow roads, this savings is not considered significant enough to warrant compromising the double line system, which is well established and collectively understood by road users. So I'm asking this board tonight to consider um, placing a double yellow line on O'Hare Road. It's been my experience, uh, and you and I talked about this, that uh, there's a tendency that once you uh, line stripe a road uh, like that, um, that the uh, speeds, and we have found over the, I have found over the years in doing this, that the speeds have a tendency to increase. Uh, people sometimes see the double yellow and don't really pay attention to the speed limit signs. Uh, you'll see speeds 35, 40 mile an hour as you would on a regular 35 mile an hour road. Uh, there's a tendency not to pay attention as much to the speed limit sign. So what was initially uh, 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 complained about was the uh, visibility of the roadway alignment and stuff ends up being an enforcement issue for the police departments. And I think you'll find that you'll have much more, uh, many more complaints with, with speeding as opposed to complaints about uh, legible uh, roadway marking. So I'm just putting that out there. Uh, as my experience with the uh, uh, double yellows or single yellows on a 25 mile an hour posted road, it, there's a tendency for the speeds to go up and then we have issues uh, that we have to enforce with, through the police department. So that's all uh, I'll say on that. Thank you. Th thanks, Bill. I, I did drive the road uh, one night in the rain in that, and uh, there is insufficient lighting in the terrain of the road. It's windy, it's uphill. I did discuss this matter with our police chief, and people are going to speed no matter whether it's one line, two lines. People drive, that's just their style of driving. I think what people are looking for is a guideline at night, something on that road that they can see to identify that, hey, you know, I'm on my side of the road, and they feel a lot safer. That, that's what I'm looking at here, the safety of the residents that travel this road. I also talked to Sean about that a couple months ago, and I think he concurred with Bill that, uh, that it does tend to increase speeding. But I think the same amount of people speed, I don't think it's going to make more people who don't speed speed. Uh, and you know, maybe they feel more comfortable that they can stay in their lane better and go faster. And I, I think that's the only reason. But that's not going to make, uh, I mean, I'd have to say most people don't speed on the roads. The, the, the speeders get uh, the, the attention, but they're probably a minority that actually speed compared to all the cars that travel that road. So it seems like it's, we're almost penalizing the people that, that, that don't speed and need some safety. And like Frank said, the, the curves and uh, bends and the hills and everything like that, it's, especially when a road's wet. I, I, I heard what you said last time, but like I said, I, I still think lines would make it safer for the normal people. It, it seems to be a cut through road. It seems like people coming down Muse Bishop Road or using that to hurry up and jump out to 980. So I, I think they have a tendency, they're in a hurry to go to work, come home from work, they're speeding on this road. But it's bad at night. Well, there's not sufficient lighting on the road. Mawindi's well, probably the same way, it's just as traveled. And I think those are the two most traveled roads that we have that are the most windiest for uh, heavily traveled roads. So I'd also suggest we do Mawindi.
Uh, so let me just add one more thing. Uh, from my uh, point of view as, as the director of public works, I have many roads similar to this. Burnside Road comes to mind that have uh, high uh, traffic uh, counts on them. I mean, if we do this road, do, do we do other roads? And are we now at a point where we need to start putting a... Yeah. Well, um, I think you did say, well, Bill, about okay. implementing yep. a, a line so painting let program. Just, let, me just, let me just move forward with the comment that I have. Um, I think what we if need to can. do is, uh, if, if, if the board uh, approves this, uh, be prepared to put a contract out every year for the line striping, a separate line striping contract that the township controls. And I would be okay with that. Yeah, I would too. I was actually surprisingly um, shocked at how inexpensive line painting actually is. Um, Supervisor Aguizio had a... Yeah, Supervisor... Uh, Lineal foot. Yeah. Yeah. Not 12, 15 so, cents a mile, right? No, a foot, a lineal foot. Foot, yeah. yeah. But Bill, here's what concerns me. That's all fine if our roads were wide enough. But you're going to end up some places with two lanes seven foot wide. I mean, over on uh, my south point, what's the road? 15 foot wide. So uh, uh, how's it going to work when there was an accident? Who crossed the line? You know what I'm saying? The, the, our roads just aren't wide enough. I mean, I was with you when you actually didn't want the turnpike to put a yellow line over on Laurel Hill. I make a motion that we put the double yellow line on O'Hara Road. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Just, just a caveat on that, that the work will probably not be able to be done until we don't, there's no sulb on the road, and we at least have 50 degrees. That's what they said. So um, it wasn't looking as favorable. As, soon, as yeah. soon as conditions would warrant, that would be the time to do it. So yeah. It was 60 on Saturday, and with, I actually talked to some of the people at um, the parking lot paint company, and they felt pretty confident that with the winter we've had, they can uh, get something done. It was done. just a caveat in their proposal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I might suggest that we do, a, we're trying it out, it doesn't hurt to try it, but I also make a motion that we also do Moiny Road right now and have two roads to try it out on and see how it goes. I'm fine with that. So you, did you make that as a form of motion? Yes. I would agree, I second. Oh, okay, it's been moved and second. We also line paint, double line paint Moiny Road. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. So we're going to do O'Hare and Mawinney. 27-2020. Consider the request to rezone 3.4 acres from R2 to C3 location intersection of Schifoni Road at O'Hare Road. Applicant Fred Dalbo, Cannonsburg Supply and Equipment. A public hearing was held November 18, 2019. Do I have a motion to uh, on this item? Resolution. So this item fails for lack of a motion. 2018-2020, consider the request to rezone 20.8 acres from R1 to C3, location 1710 and 1718 980 Road, applicant Fred Dalbo, Cannonsburg Supply and Equipment. A public hearing was held November 18, 2019. I make it motion. Do I have a second? Motion dies for lack of a second. 29-2020, consider the contract for auditing service to Hozak Spec Museum Wood LLP for a three-year period at a cost of $10,900, and $11,150. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Tom, did you say? Yes, aye. Okay. Passed 5-0. 30 2020 consider terminating the contract for website hosting services with government office to be effective July 9th, 2020. Make a motion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 
31 2020 consider the contract for website design and hosting services to civic plus for a three-year period at an annual cost of ten thousand seven hundred seventy two dollars and sixty six cents make that motion I'll could, second. could we have that to um, will that be starting after Ju uh, July July 9th yes it takes six to what was it six to eight months to build it out so we'll keep our current one while we're building that one out and then move to this one and maybe well I guess it's in the contract but the is it the third or the fourth year that's 4700 yeah, fourth year, fourth year. Mm -hmm. maybe just put it in the motion so we have it on record well we're only approving a three-year contract so in the fourth year we would approve that is that uh, Don, would we still get that 4700 for the fourth year? You would if you were to return the service in the contract, yes. Okay. Okay. 32-2020, consider the formal easement. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's, did we pass that? We need a vote after discussion. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5-0. 2020 consider the formal easement agreement between Cecil Township and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs related to the bridge over and across Morgan Road, a township road. So this is a, this is a plan that's been on the table for a, quite a while. Uh, the Veterans of, uh, Affairs uh, related to the cemetery approach the township. I've been working with Gretchen related to this. Uh, they're proposing a structure to cross Morgan Road. Uh, you can see right here, there's a bridge proposed to come across, and they would come down off of the bridge and then create another access point onto Morgan Road right here. Uh, the, uh, the bridge as it's designed, uh, there's multiple sheets here. You can see a little bit closer, uh, it's, it's designed as a, uh, like a con span structure, uh, they would have total responsibility for uh, for this bridge. This wouldn't be a township bridge, but typically you don't need any approval when you're a federal the federal government for anything. Uh, they've never needed any approvals from the township for their site plans or whatever. But in this event, because they're crossing our road, they made this request. Gretchen's been involved in, and I guess the best way to handle this is with an easement. So I believe what's in front of you tonight would be the easement which would contain the bridge which would be maintained by the veterans affair you're just giving them the right to use your road correct Gretchen right well that's correct essentially the airspace over the road um, it's they're fully responsible for their construction and maintenance of the bridge um, their indemnity provisions insurance provisions and protections for the township um, and y this has taken quite some time as Dan mentioned um, you know negotiating with the federal government just takes time so unfortunately um, it has been a year or two but it's finally done I mean I am holding the original which is signed by the Department of Veterans Affairs so uh, if the board approves it we will then sign off on it and get it recorded and we should be in good shape do I have a motion so moved. do I have a second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. Go on to um, just the routine things. I, I think that during deliberations of those, the rezoning request for those two items on 27 and 28, uh, I think I thought the board had a commitment during deliberations that we weren't going to leave an applicant hanging or all the residents hanging <laughs> on it. A no vote didn't help anybody. It didn't help the applicant. It, there's no answer to it. It didn't help the interested residents who were even in attendance. Uh, if, if, it could come up again next month or the next so month. So are you later. asking that we take a formal well, well, vote? I'm saying that, that we committed to at least co um, coming to a determination and not let it hang out like what happened with uh, Mr. Fuchs. Uh, he has been dragged out for a year. All right, so. Yeah. But, but the, the point is, I think, on, on both of them, uh, I, I think we still have to take action, and at least we committed to, and I think we owe it to the applicant and to the residents. Okay, so you want to make a motion? You well, had the opportunity at that point in time to make a motion to open it up for a vote. Well, I'd make a motion on the first one. Uh, 27, the... 20, I'll read it. 27, 20, 20, consider the request to rezone 3.4 acres from R2 to C3 location intersection of Chiffoni Road at O'Hare Road. Applicant Fred Dalbo, Cannonsburg Supply and Equipment. A public hearing was held November 18, 2019. Now, again, I'd make that motion because I, I considered as we talked about it spot zoning right, to make it go we can't do it right and i'll second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. wait 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 
We're vote. If you say I, you're voting to rezone this. No. 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 To deny it. Deny it. Yeah. Okay. Deny Formally it. deny. It. Okay. I didn't hear so that you, part. You just did a revote on that one. Is that what happened? We're not revoting. Like, We're. It, it never. Was... It never made a motion for these. It never. Okay move forward so he's actually making a motion to, to deny it you're specifically yes. okay affirmatively denying it okay okay um so it, it was moved and seconded all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. it passes five zero so that is officially and formally denied 20 and then, and then 28 2020, uh, 2020 you want to read it or you want me to so just it. so they know what we're voting on consider the Request to rezone 20.8 acres from R1 to C3, location 710 and 1710 and 1718 980 Road. Applicant Fred Dalbo, Cannons Works Supply and Equipment. A public hearing was held November 18, 2019. So you make an, you're making another motion to deny. motion to deny that also. I think the applicant wasn't served well by his professional who, uh, when I don't think they understand that uh, he's hurting himself asking for C3 when he has non-conforming industrial, and I think that's the type of business he still needs to have there. Okay, so you also made a motion to deny. Also, that is spot zoning once again. Correct. So I'll, make, I'll second the, uh, the motion to deny. All those in favor signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. aye. Opposed? No. Passes 4-1. The denial passes 4-1. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. 33 2020 consider the minutes from the monday december 2nd 2019 monthly meeting of the cecil township board of supervisors i'll make a motion i'll second all those in favor signify by saying aye aye aye, aye. passes five zero 34 2020 consider the minutes from the monday december 16th 2019 special meeting of the cecil township board of supervisors I'll make a motion i'll second all those in favor signify by saying aye Aye. 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 Passes 5 0. 35 2020. Consider the general fund invoices from December 1st through December 31st, 2019. I'll make a. Tom made a motion. I'll second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Eric? Aye. Okay. 5 0. Okay. Um, engin Township Engineer, Dan, your report? Yes, uh, just a couple items to mention to the board. Uh, number one, uh, we received uh, some bridge reports. Uh, the, the standard bridge inspections were completed for the Ridgewood Bridge and also for the Creedmoor Bridge. Dawn passed those along. Uh, we're working with Bill right now to come back to the board with some recommendations. Uh, the Ridgewood Bridge needed posted. Bill's got the signs in. Uh, that will be done here post haste. The Creedmoor Bridge is also going to need to be posted, but it's a, a much higher uh, weight uh, allowed. Uh, but the, the Ridgewood Bridge is in pretty bad condition. Again, we're going to come back to the board with some alternatives uh, to consider either uh, a number of different things uh, that I've talked to Bill about. We'll bring that back to you next month. Uh, related to the uh, sanctuary development over off of uh, O'Hara Road, uh, the board already authorized uh, the township to act as the applicant for the PennDOT Highway occupancy permit. Uh, Don received that last week, and he asked me if it was okay to sign. I looked it over. Technically, it had everything we needed. Uh, Don got from them today a resolution uh, PennDOT will not accept it unless there's a resolution that authorizes Dawn to sign on the behalf of the township. So um, I know we don't have an item on the agenda for this tonight, but I think what we're asking for is an authorization for the township manager to sign the HOP uh, application for the sanctuary development on the behalf of Cecil Township. And that's in the form, should be in the form of a resolution. And I think it would be 36 2020 if you decide to do it. So I move to approve that resolution. I'll second it. Give it a number, though, the actual number. Yeah. 36, 36, 36 2020. Harold, would you check on that and make sure? Will you check to make sure? Yeah, that's next. 36 2020 is next. Oh. Yep. yep. 36 2020. Tom made a motion. I'll second it. 
All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Passes 5-0. And then the uh, last time I just wanted to bring up is uh, related to DePauly Road. There was a question last month related to uh, range resources and their participation in the uh, DePauly Road improvements. We have talked to them. Uh, they're in agreement with the plan that's been presented for them, uh, conditioned upon the township obtaining the easements for the storm sewer uh, and any widening that's required. Uh, so uh, nothing's going to be able to be done there until the springtime anyway. Uh, but uh, we can move ahead with uh, uh, obtaining those uh, easements for the storm sewer that we need and uh, keep that project moving forward. So I just wanted to bring that up to the board. And that's it. Unless there's any other questions, you have a copy of my report. Yes, before, before we go any further, Bill and I have been up McConnell's trails. They have some serious problems. They got landslides already. It's sliding behind the... Uh, Current townhouses, right, Bill? And up on top of the hill, it's sliding in a cut area very bad. And I don't want to be another Strabane <laughs> where we end up in the middle of a major lawsuit. Yeah, you have you brought this I mean, up. I, I've talked to you. I know you said yeah. they were sending a geotech guy out, but Bill and I actually, in Murado, sat and watched the hillside actually sliding down, and it's getting wider and wider. Right. And it's all in a cut area up on the very top. Well, there's a couple things that you could consider, and we probably need to talk about this a little bit more. Uh, number one, I've already put the developer on notice of the issue. I've been informed that he's going to come back to us with what their plan is to address it. So that's that's on their end. As, as we talked about, but I, I just so wanted, you I wanted you, it on record. Yeah, sure. So that doesn't come back. You look, Mr. Banks, it's $7 million for that slide. I'm... Deeply aware of that one. Uh, the the other the other thing, Gretchen. I don't know if if there are issues on lots that are starting to become problematic. I mean, we do issue building permits, so until until issues are resolved related to those particular lots, could we hold on building permits? Which development is this? This is in McConnell Trails. Could we put a moratorium on the building permits being issued in that area until they address that issue? We, we can talk about that. We've discussed some things with the zoning officer. Can we can discuss that. Uh, we've, we've talked about some things with the zoning officer, um, and we currently actually have um, uh, something at the district justice, a, a violation that's going to Oh, that's just about them working on Sunday. Correct. Great. Right. Is, there, is there something else happening? For well, this is, this is a potential issue that could affect lots that are going to be built upon that the that the um, the hillside is giving way. There's a seam of clay there that's that's creating some problems. So, so is, there it, eminent, it, is there an eminent concern? Well, yeah, there's a concern that they would start building on something and then potentially the hillside falls down behind the unit. Like sure. sure. Well, we, I, I we, just want to be careful because contractually those lots could already be sold or committed to or, you know. But ultimately it's our responsibility to make sure that hillside doesn't start. Well, see, see, that's where it gets... That's where it gets, uh, and again, I'll defer to the solicitor. We're, we're responsible for the public improvements, which would be the roads and the sewers within there that we own and operate. The lots are contractually an issue between the developer and Ryan Holmes. We have a responsibility to make sure that if there's a problem there, I'm sure we can call it out and we can require something to be done, but we're, we're not involved in approving those lots other than, you know, their, their use. Again, I've been through this. I, I've learned about it through North Strabane. I was just going to ask, like, North Strabane, uh, Frank and I heard, they were, they were at the LSA asking because they need to come up with $7 million for their slide in the Maj in Majestic Hill. Yeah, they've, they've taken a position to move the road on their own. They want to, their public improvements are in the way. I don't think our public improvements are in jeopardy here. This is, this is in, a, in a cut slope in the rear of the lots, which could potentially affect the use of the lots. So uh, so you think it, it's something that will affect the lots only, not our public improvements, and these lots have not been developed at all yet? Well, they're, they're being developed now. They are? Yes. Okay, okay I think and, we... And they're a part of an approved recorded plan. Yes. So, you know... But if I, we I, see... but, wait, but also, I think the question is, though, can we deny put a moratorium on all the That's building awesome. permits because... 
uh, the history up there that they're having different slides in different places. Uh, Dan's not suggestion, suggesting don't issue a permit where we see an active slide, but make them address the slides themselves before we issue any permit. Because if you issue one on a one that's not sliding today, tomorrow it can start sliding after you issue the permit. I think that's what you're asking. Well, it, it is. That is correct. Yes. So maybe instead of putting you on the spot, we, let's give we you. We should talk further about it I, so that I fully understand. Yeah, I, and we should look at the, whatever options we have. Obviously, public safety is a high concern as well, but then we have these contractual geez. issues. But correct me with. if I'm wrong, as a board, we are all okay with the potential of putting a moratorium on permits while this issue is figured out. I am. I am too, yeah. Eric. Everybody. So you have the majority right. of the board have, yes. saying that if, that if you are able to come to that conclusion, we are okay with it. Okay. okay. Wait, yeah, wait. we'll talk further. Also, Dan, Bill was saying the roads they've done up there, they're going to have to all be milled down. I can't hear. I'm sorry. What did you say, Ron? From them running the heavy equipment on and gouging them all up. That, that is the finish coat that they put on, right? Yeah, the first wearing course, not yeah. the second wearing course. Yeah, I've already put them on notice by letter that, that they had heavy vehicles on, on the road and that I've told them that we've not even discussed or come to any conclusion how we would test those roads or what we would require them to do before we would accept it. We put them on notice, Ron. I want to see what the ramifications are. We don't know yet what that is, how we want to test it, what we want them to do. We've required extended maintenance bonds in the past. Okay. I mean, there's, other, there's some things that we can talk about, but I don't think we need to decide it right now, but we did put them on notice. Okay. Thank you. On that note of the slides, though, we do have the geotech studies that are done, right, for all the new developments, which is, th that protects us there from the slides, correct? Yes. What, on McConnell, what we, what we require, and again, we don't, we as the township don't want the liability of being out there to watch every spoon of dirt that they move around. Again, that, those lots are a contractual issue with them and Ryan Holmes. So what we require them to do, though, to protect ourselves is that we require a geotechnical study. We require them to do geotechnical inspections. They are required to give us those reports, and then they're required to give us a certification at the end before we take over any of the public improvements. So that's on every note of every plan that is ever approved by this board. I've made sure that that's been in place for 10 years. So we've had it, but North Turbina just implemented it, right? And that could be part of the problem why they had the slides and we should be safe and fine. No, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to speculate in public about what happened in North Turbina, but it, it, it's, it was a, a number of different circumstances that made that happen. There's usually more that happens behind the scenes that we don't know about, but, but in this case, we're, we're protected. The township's protected. That, that we are not responsible for the geotech, but we are requiring the developer to do things to protect the public is the best way to put it. I will. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Um, so nothing really significant to report for December other than really day-to-day -day workings with the manager and zoning officer and engineer on a variety of matters. Um, other than that, that's, that's it. Thanks. Um, Bill, Director of Public Works. Uh, thank you. Um, just a couple of things to uh, report, discuss. The um, drainage issue at uh, Laurel Hill and Sunset has been addressed. The Turnpike hired Allison Park Construction to install the drainage swill and get the uh, water to go into the inlet over there. I'm uh, uh, quite pleased with the work that was done. There's still a little bit of work to do on the roadway itself. Coming down Sunset, the, the water's leaving the gutter line and the uh, pavement needs pressed there, and we'll get them to uh, address that. The other uh, uh, topic of note is the township jail. We uh, recently covered that with the uh, remaining tarp that we had from our salt storage shed that was damaged last winter. And uh, we now have a, a fairly heavy cover on that. And I would suggest to the, to the board that uh, thinking about the jail and its future and its location, that you may consider repurposing those brick up there for something uh, like fireplaces in the park. Thank you. Um, Don, you said you had an administrative report. Yes, Madam Chair. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just have one item. Uh, I have received letters of inclusion from all supervisors participating in the Township's health plan. Uh, these letters will be filed pursuant to the second class Township Code. That's all I have. Okay. Um, Board of Supervisors discussion of new business. 
Tom, do you want to talk about the AML? Yeah. Dan, we talked about that AML grant. Yes. And I think you looked into it. I think uh, Fisher talked about some of the terms of it. But uh, for, for our old grant that it was actually approved, I think it was a prior board that, a, that a, had committed to um, for, for that grant, for that building, for the public works building. And, and I understand that how democracy works and a new board can change the, the, the plan on that. And I, I, that's, that's what happened. But at the time, that, that was a contingent uh, and, and it was a necessary thing for us. That was really the only reason we were interested in that property. But now this grant, can you tell us how we might be able to get this uh, uh, thing cleaned up? Uh, I mean, what's the best way to go get that grant? Yeah, I, I, I'd, after, yeah, the, the best way to approach this would be continue to pursue the AML pilot money and the pilot money would include some sort of uh, an economic development of the property. So uh, what we need to do is probably at least speak with the people that run that grant program and determine from them what would they be looking for in terms of some sort of an economic development study or what would it take uh, if we still wanted to apply with, for pilot money if the township was not going to do the public works building there any for anymore but but want to consider the land for some future use or some future development what what would they require can we take that approach i'm not i'm not sure on that uh what they would say but they they want to see economic development would they give you some kind of a guideline I, i'm sure they have examples of that that they might have done on other programs because when i look into the aml pilot program they give out about 25 million dollars every year on this program so I'm sure they have examples of other places where people have done this and what, what else can be done. So what I'd like to do is just, just do a little bit of research with them, come back to the board, and give you guys some options if there are any related to pursuing that grant. That, that's all. That's all I can tell you at this point. Do all this before the deadline just in case we do I, decide I don't, to apply? I don't believe there is a deadline coming up. That's what I was going to ask. What is the deadline? Yeah, there, there, the the deadline. Well, there, there's nothing, nothing that is announced that anything for 2020 yet on their website. So I think they roll that out at some point. I'll speak to them tomorrow morning, and I can find out from, from, from them if there is any. I think it's a rolling deadline when you get something in. Uh, the last time we submitted it in August, they didn't look at it until September. So I don't. I'm not aware that the yeah, the pilot money, there might be something on the regular AML grants that's due, due right now, but again, we know that'll just go to the bottom of a pile. All right, so I mean, I think Gretchen sent me a copy. It might have been just a regular AML grant that she sent me, but it did say January 31st is the deadline for that. So if there's a difference between a a ALM regular Riz. program and, the, okay, then. There uh, is a difference between the pilot. Well, so I'm not asking him to, uh, or anybody to prove uh, an application for it, but can we at least authorize Dan to look into that to get us the information so we can decide? I don't yeah. think we need a for I mean, that's fine. If you want to get information call. and bring it to us, that's fine. So, yep. Good. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Um, Board of Supervisors discussion will business. I apologize, Charlie, my fault. I, I do the agenda and I didn't put the stuff on there, but uh, I'm very happy to say that we were awarded a $100,000 LSA grant that I'd been working on uh, with Dan Dysroth and Jason Ortite um, for bridges in Cecil Park. So that is awesome. All of our bridges will be um, redone sometime in 2020 this year, hopefully as soon as, sorry, hear me. Hopefully as soon as we can move forward with that. So we got $100,000, which was awesome. We were one of what, 36? I think it was 36 um, grants awarded by the LSA. Uh, we also have received, in coordination with Jason Ortite's office, two additional grants. Um, one was a $14,000 grant for handicapped, sw handicapped swings for parks. Um, there's two of them. Believe it or not, they're $7,000 a piece. Um, and we have been awarded two. There will be a um, unveiling of that whenever they are ready, I, I think Jason said at some point in the in mid-January. Um, we also, I also worked with Jason Ortite's office to get a, another grant for a drone for Cecil Township Police. Um, Cecil Township Police were, were awarded a $5,000 grant for a drone for use of in, in their police work. So that was, so that was awesome. There were three grants that we received within the past uh, really couple weeks. 
um, continue to work with grants over the next, as you can see, we're working on the DCR, DCNR grant. And then we have meetings set up with uh, Representative Ortite's office to talk about grants for the Lawrence Sewage Project. Um, any other citizens, general comments well, or hold questions? Hold on one second. I think Cindy might have said it wrong. We're not redoing the bridges. We're putting two new ones in that you can drive across. Three new ones. Well, three new bridges. Two that you can drive across. Uh, correct. That's correct. Right. Two that you can drive across two and then have to one be, in the yeah. middle. I couldn't remember off the top yeah. of my head. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and then, um, I'm sorry, citizens, general comments and questions. Again, Kevin Camerson, 15 Swahart Road. Madam Chair, I'd like to address um, Supervisor Fleer and Supervisor Cassiola's comments in regards to um, uh, off-street parking. Um, I agree 100%. I think the board needs to go back and look what they did the last 10 years and be consistent. I remember over at Maple Ridge, I mean, not Maple Ridge, yeah, Maple Ridge with Mr. Fultz. You know, we went round and round for two or three months. We got two cars parking on the driveway and many off-street parking. I mean, you need to be consistent. We got developers, I think, up in, up in your subdivision, Cindy, where they deeded land to the township to push snow, like Ronnie talked about. You know, we can't just do it one time, then forget about it for six years, then brings it up again, so. I think that's why it was tabled tonight. Well, the consistent. one thing is, I not believe this, but most people's garages are filled with junk. Yeah. Well, so I they don't. <laughs> They don't park in the garage anyway. But up there at Lynn Fultz's, Dan might talk about, we went round and round. We increased it where the cars weren't on the sidewalks. On a Hare Road, um, Scary Maisie plan, you know, there's extra parking down at the bottom just for that reason. So need to be consistent. Thanks. All right. You have a comment? Well, first of all, I want, I'm Kenny Strain mm -hmm. from up in the Scar Maisie Plan in Windsor Woods, 4022. I wanted to thank Dan for following up on the question I had at the last session about the Pauley Road. I appreciate that very much. And the other request that I have, and this is the only other thing I have to say, when you folks are all talking and you're using your microphones, would you please keep the microphones close to your mouth so old people like me sitting in the back that, that can't hear that well so that I can. Now, I know there's sometimes you have discussions that's between you guys, but when everybody's talking or having individual discussion that you want the public to hear, please keep the microphones close to your face so we can hear what you're saying. No problem. If there's no uh, other. I also want to say I want to thank the road crew for going out New Year's Eve and taking care of the roads, they did a fabulous job. Uh, well, yeah, you didn't go. <laughs> um, this meeting, or well, during this meeting, we do have a um, liquor license hearing immediately following. You're welcome to stay, but we're gonna take a brief five minute intermission and then jump into our liquor license hearing. Tell everybody, Frank's back in the Baltimore Ravens.